Hello, I'm John Tanner. I'm Editor-in-Chief for Telecom Asia. Joining me now is Mohammed Izani bin Karim. He's the General Manager of Carrier Network Development for Global and Wholesale at Telecom Malaysia. Izani, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, John. Thank you very much. So we're here to talk about the MCT cable. Uh, the first cable landing will be in Cambodia. So what kind of benefits will they realize from that? Cambodia is an emerging market for us and then as well as not only for TML, as well, as well for the entire region. Um, however, Cambodia lacks a, a basic infrastructure that it, has, it is not well connected. Um, currently, Cambodia is very much reliant on the terrestrial network where they need to access Vietnam or Thailand to get out to the rest of the world, um, as well as satellite communication. So from that perspective, they are very much behind the rest of the countries in, in this region. It has 16 million of population, a GDP growth of about 7%. And from that itself, you can see the potential growth. The current internet users, there's only uh, 5 million so far and out of 5 million, 3 million are actually internet users. So the penetration rate is only 33%. So the growth is fantastic. So broadening the scope to uh, the ASEAN region, uh, what social and economic value has the MCT cable scheme brought to uh, that region? Basic thing for any um, development in this region, you need to be connected. ASEAN is, uh, is actually has its own advantage being, the, um, being a region where labor cost is actually relatively cheap. So there's a lot of potential there. So to bring in investors into this region, you need to be connected because obviously uh, that no longer becomes a luxury. It becomes a, you know, the basic necessity for any industry to, be, to, to house their hub in, in, in this region. So MCT in a, in a small form provides that at least into Cambodia and that becomes the gateway for the Indochina uh, market. So we're not looking just Cambodia from that perspective. So MCT not only links into Cambodia, there's also terrestrial links that connects into uh, Laos, uh, even Myanmar for that matter, and then the existing network that links to Thailand and Vietnam. So from that perspective, as ASEAN as a region by itself, it becomes an, an attractive point for, for investors to make the investment in this area. So how did TM select the landing partner to build the cable and what were the major challenges in establishing the consortium? Well, that's interesting because you know, in any submarine cable systems, in any projects, it is very important to actually understand the needs of your partner and for all these partners to have the common goal. It is actually the greater purpose of all these partners to be joined together, what is actually the, the purpose of grouping together into a consortium. So in this aspect, when we teamed up with Telcotec of uh, Cambodia, Symphony of uh, Thailand, we have the common goal of getting ourselves connected to expand our business. And then, especially for Telcotec and Symphony, who are actually uh, new in this industry, they want to be connected to the rest of the world. Currently, they are very much dependent on their neighboring countries in this case, and also other incumbent telcos where they need to be transiting another location to finally get to the contents. In this case, what we're building is with MCT, uh, our lending partners, they get first-hand um, connectivity to wherever they want to go. So from that perspective, our common goal is the same. So we want to be connected, whereas for TM, on our side, uh, we want to be the regional champion. ASEAN is our focus. So it makes perfect sense for us to work with another, uh, another organization to help us achieve that goal and at the same time for TM to help them to get to where they want to be. So how do you think the submarine cable industry is going to develop in the future and uh, what is TM's strategy for subsea cable development? It will continue to develop for obvious reasons. Um, there are more and more bandwidth hungry um, applications in the market. Um, people are talking about in Japan, for example, one gig to the homes. In Malaysia itself, uh, we are moving towards 100 meg, 500 meg. So obviously, there will still be a need to have additional capacity um, to, you know, to, to, to get all this internet bandwidth out. Uh, for example, um, another example, for example, uh, in Cambodia, currently they have about 40 gigs of capacity, and that is expected to grow fivefold. So as a region itself, there will still be a need for additional uh, semi cables to be built. The current one that we have, um, 
obviously there's a lifetime to it. Uh, Simi V3 is more than 15 years now. APCN2 is also reaching about 15 years. So there, there, there will be a time that this needs to be replaced. So STM, um, our strategy is to be, we have to be selective on where we put our money. So we will continue to develop systems in the form of a consortium because we believe that, you know, you, you can't do this alone. You need partners. So, uh, you know, that's why we will continue to invest in new projects. For example, currently we are now in CMEV5 and uh, we're looking at some other new ventures as well. We have just put into service the BBG um, just a couple of months ago. But our requirement continue to grow. So we will continue to look for partners and look for new areas to expand our business. Um, private systems, it will be on a SNIT basis. So we will still um, procure some capacity from private systems as well because obviously we need diversity and uh, so our strategy will continue to, to be uh, you know, that way.